Hi guys, welcome to the Citizen Channel. I hope you're all staying safe and well. Please, if you are new to this channel, please push that subscribe button. We do everything city, past and present here on these little vlogs. So I do try and inform and entertain. And there's some links on screen as well for Facebook and Twitter where I do post loads of city stuff. So if you follow a friend me on there, I do check every few days and follow a friend everyone back. And if you do get a chance, please have a check out my uh, film and TV channel as well, uh, which I try and inform and entertain on there and all the latest films and tv drama here in the uk and from around the world so if you can check that out that will be fantastic anyway hope you enjoy today's feature right today we've got a regular look now a new feature of course with the manchester city program back with us uh, a new feature where every week i'm just gonna have a quick flick through not like my uh, away day programs where a bit more of analysis of what's inside etc but we'll just have a look at the city program see if there's any been anything of interest if you want to subscribe to it or you want to try and get a copy some of these things will have some great articles and especially today there's a fantastic article in this uh, city program obviously for the the leicester game we're going to have a, a look at today so yeah it's just just to keep you updated perhaps a few couple of excerpts as well that have interest as we look through it as well to uh to city fans and football fans in general sometimes with some of the information as well so we're going to have a look at uh, manchester city versus arsenal match day program of course for the 28th of august 2021 yet yeah, three pound fifty but if you do subscribe but just uh interesting thing reach sports are doing it. i've used them a lot in the past for buying programs there's never usually a problem uh, but I did subscribe as well. I, I'm going to get copies when I go to the matches, but I'm just going to get as pristine copy if I can through the post. But uh, I did subscribe before the Norwich game. Uh, I've still yet to have either copy of the Norwich or the Arsenal one, which is unusual. They sometimes arrive before the game. So uh, if any of you out there have had a similar thing with Reach Sports, let me know. But uh, I will be contacting them. Uh, over the next few days if, if they don't arrive because I'm, I'm a bit surprised that I've certainly not had all right it may have been a bit late for the uh for the Norwich one but it certainly wasn't late for this one so anyway but they are usually very reliable don't get me wrong and you can subscribe through there and it works out about £3.25 uh, for 26 issues so obviously we don't play 26 home games it'll carry over to next season etc etc so uh, yeah so that's of interest to you and they say you just want to buy it as a one-off you can do that as well I believe you can buy one-offs of uh, reasonably price plus plus postage you more or less play, pay face value plus pro postage for it so there you go right let's get on to the programme that's just a, a little bit let me know anyway if you've, if you've done the same and if you can give me an idea is it just me or is there a problem there I'm not too sure and I will obviously sort it out but I thought I'd just mention that just in case you're having a similar problem right yeah the cover of course fantastic of course it's a, a homage or, or to do with pride and football the homophobia etc so a fantastic cover there a little bit more on that in a minute because there's a bit more information inside so looking through i've just sort of uh highlighted about six five or six item, items that were very interested obviously we've had the statues haven't we fantastic statues aren't they uh, yeah some people don't like them i think they're all right they're very modern very you know obviously i, I like the old traditional statues but this, these are, are quite modern i do like them and obviously Within the programme, there's Heroes Immortalised piece, which uh, looks at, uh, obviously, the uh, Mr Andy Scott. I called him Tony Scott this morning, so on a, on a tweet, I did have to do that. I think, it was, it was he a director, Tony Scott? I know it was Ridley Scott, isn't there? <laughs> I'm getting all confused, but say that. That's my age. But, uh, yeah, those Heroes, Heroes Immortalised started off. Uh, statues of Vincent Company and David, David Silver, two of the pillars of our recent unprecedented success, have each been unveiled ahead of our class with Arsenal. The work honours their Contribution to the most decorated era in the club's 127 year history uh, today. Yeah, somebody comment, yeah, they will be looking back and doing older players as well. Um, obviously, the chairman uh, said that in an interview. A couple of people weren't aware, saying, you know, what about guys going back in time? But uh, they will be looking into that as well. So it won't just be like Pulse 2008 or something like that. And it goes on to talk about uh, Andy Scott himself, the the sculpture. Born and raised in Glasgow and a graduate of the City School of Art, Andy Scott is one of the most respected sculptors of the generation and the man behind those two incredible pieces of Manchester City history, as well as the upcoming monument depicting, depicting our record marksman Sergio Aguero, of course, which will be, put, which will be going. Known for his large-scale figurative pieces, the projects have been conducted entirely remotely from creation to completion and transportation of the pieces. Ahead of the big reveal, Andy explained the lasting impression that Manchester City has left on him and his colleagues 
as well as the powerful connection that football and art have shared in commemorating and celebrating our love of the beautiful game. Since being contacted by City about the job, first as a possibility and now as reality, I'm probably one of the biggest City fans out there, that's for sure. So there you go. We've got another convert, obviously from his connections to City, that's fantastic. So a good piece there, uh, Heroes Immortalised. And then he goes on to this City Pride thing, as I said, that's fantastic. This weekend, our beloved City joins together to celebrate Manchester Pride in its 36th year. The festival has become one of the largest Pride celebrations in the UK, attracting upwards of 140,000 people. Yeah, I don't think there's a parade this year, was there? But uh, it's a great piece. And it goes on to explain about the, the, the limited... Uh, sort of Puma shirts, them shirts that the lads are wearing there, uh, Phil Foden, Grealish and uh, Mr Torres are wearing there. Uh, and obviously the front cover featured those things there. Uh, it was a limited edition Pride t-shirt designed by our competition winner Lily. Yeah, so they had a competition for this. After selling out of its initial run, Puma are re-releasing the shirt to join us in our celebration. So make sure to check out our online club shop, mancity.com slash shop. And get yours before it sells out again. So that's fantastic. They do look, they do look really impressive with that. They do want to uh, buy one of those. They're fantastic, and it takes us nicely into a Q and A with them. Um David Alvarado, he's he's the uh, current chair of the Canal Street Blues, and it's a great little question and answer piece about his, you know, his, his sort of connection to City, how he first started, and links with other groups, etc., etc. And a couple of last paragraphs, I thought I'd just uh, quote for you. Uh, obviously, very of interest to you if you if you're any interest in, in joining this sort of group or or whatever. Uh, one of the questions asked was, how can fans get involved with CSB? What is the membership process, and who is it open to? Uh, and of course Dave goes on to say the modern way would be to contact us on social media I guess we are at Canal Street Blues on Twitter and Canal Street Blues uh, Blues IGBT on Instagram um, or we can also be found on Facebook Canal Street Blues MCFC Supporters Club the joining process is to log onto the city website and apply to join the OSC selecting canal street blues as your chosen branch anyone is welcome if someone wants to chat to us first then that's fine too so there you go and then he goes on to say um ask the question what can fans in general do to support lg our lgbtq plus fans in stadia and online how can they be strong allies uh, online abuse is a hot topic nowadays uh says uh says dave uh, as has been highlighted by the racism issues we have had after the euros the internet can be a horrible place and those that seek to cause hurt and divisiveness feel they can say what they want with no consequences the best thing people can do is call out bad behaviors such as that pe that people know they are the ones with the problem but it's also to think about what they are saying and why and what does it add to supporting our club other than perhaps upset people that just want to give city their love to let football and our club unite us rather than be a conduit for abusing each other Great words from Dave there, and a great article. Say lots of questions and answers there. It's fantastic, uh, you know, and sort of interest to someone like me who doesn't really know much or get involved in much about that sort of thing as well. It's fantastic. Uh, yeah, the play for both feature was was nice. Uh, this issue they got Patrick Vieira, of course, and obviously his links with Arsenal and City, uh, and other players that have been linked. Obviously, um, I, I always have a look to see if I know all these. Uh, We've got Clive Allen, which I knew, Sil Silvino, which I knew, Dave Bacuzzi, which I knew, Tommy Caton, James Blair. Not too sure on James Blair, I'll have to check that one up. Uh, Billy Blythe, yeah, that's another name I'll have to check up as well. Paul Dickoff, Eddie McGoldrick, David Rowcastle, David Seaman, Dave Halliday, yes, yeah, sort of, sort of with him. Uh, but, you know, uh, if you do, if you look at my vlogs, you'll will probably know why I've said that. Um, Niall Quinn, Emmanuel Adebayo, Bakri Sanya, Nicolas Anelka, Patrick Vieira, Colo Torre, Brian Kidd, Sammy Nazri. Yeah, we sang his name a lot at this game. And uh, Gail Clichy. So there you go. A great blast from the past, which is a regular. This, you know, me and my black and white images. I love them. I love to love them to bits. I love these old fashioned pictures, even when it's a game where it would be in colour. I think there's just something about black and white that uh, sort of sets it off. And all these are with the backdrop of the kip axe as well, which uh, which is fantastic. And it sort of celebrates a, a Tommy Caton double against Arsenal back off. It was the fourth of December, nineteen eighty two. So of course Tommy Caton no longer with us. And then he he actually signed for Arsenal a year after this. So obviously he left an last impression. But I was 
was at, at this game, and I say it was a last minute winner, which is fantastic. You know, just just as good as a five nil thrashing, or you know, is is a last minute winner. So some great images there, and obviously going back to the wonderful, fantastic uh, Tommy Kate, and of course. And then my highlight of the magazines. Now this is this is worth the three pound fifty every week, or the three twenty five is subscribed. Of course, Gary James is back, isn't he? Gary James is back in the program with his history stuff, which is fantastic for me. And he's getting, you know, uh, certainly the last couple of issues. I think he's had four pages to uh, to actually put stuff together. And he's been looking this week at history and what makes a big club. And is it supporters? Is it trophies? Is it how long you've won trophies for? Is it when you won your first major trophy? All these sort of things are answered, and if, if anything, just to buy this program for this is absolutely fantastic. So I would encourage you to go out and have a look at it. And I just want to read a small excerpt um, from this, actually, which sort of sums up uh, uh, sums up what history perhaps is and how people should, uh, other fans should read this, of course, and, and sort of digest what we're saying, because uh, they might learn something, which a lot of fans obviously have no idea, did, let's be honest about it. But I'll just quote this little bit. Around 20 years ago, Mike Aylott, a member of the Association of Football Statisticians, performed detailed analysis as to determine the biggest clubs in England. He used all sorts of factors, but in essence focused on support. He looked at every decade of football from the 1950s onwards and then created a final list of clubs based on size and the volume of support they could expect if they finished mid-table in the Premier League in 2002-2003, assuming, assuming stadium capacity was not an issue. There you go, so that's it. cram as many in as you want. Uh, he determined that the top five clubs in order of size, biggest to smallest, here we go, were United, no surprise, Liverpool, no surprise, third, City, well, no surprise to us, but would certainly be a surprise to many opposing supporters, then Newcastle, then Arsenal, Tottenham were seventh, and Chelsea twelfth, there you go, so Chelsea, you're not a big club, behave. Well, you are a big club, but just accept the fact that, you know, City are a big club as well, because a lot of Chelsea fans don't appreciate that. Uh, a lot's analysis came before the major stadium developments at most of those clubs and before sustained success of both Chelsea and City. Both factors will undoubtedly change the results positively for City and Chelsea. Yeah, so all right, we might not have overtook United and Liverpool, we would have probably got closer and certainly it would have helped Chelsea a little bit as well. But it just does, does give a good indication, says, uh, says uh, uh, Gary James of how before the 2008 takeover, City were already regarded as one of the top three clubs in terms of status and size. In fact, Aylock calculated City to be the third biggest club in the 1980s behind United and Liverpool and ahead of fourth-placed Arsenal and fifth-placed Spurs. This was this isn't a City fan, this is just general, this is just a guy doing a study. Uh, remarkably, a City were only one of those five clubs to be without a major trophy that decade. Stunning. So what does this all mean? Well, I guess it's fairly straightforward. None of today's big six have always been regarded as an elite club since their first season of league football. However, City fans can be proud of the fact that whether it's success or support, City have certainly been regarded as one of the football's biggest clubs since the early, early 1900s. Yes, please read and digest opposing fans. Learn something before you come out with your absolute guff and rubbish. But uh, fantastic, Gary James. As I said, that, uh, that uh, loads more in that article. Yeah, please, just, just buy it just for that. It's absolutely fantastic. Well done, Gary. And just on the, a bit of a sore point, just before we finish with the programme, yeah, um, last week, I think we had the Blossoms last week in the Norwich programme, and, and he had a, a little interview with, with the guy who, obviously the lead for the Blossoms, who's obviously a City fan, but interesting enough this week, they have a guy called Joel Corrie, who's a DJ and an Arsenal fan, I mean, I don't mind this thing, and alright, there's only so many celebrity music people support City, but I, I don't think we really want to, I don't I mean, I don't personally want to see an Arsenal fan in it, I mean, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't particularly want a couple of pages of, of what our, our Arsenal are and how they're going to beat us and how he hopes he beat us, blah, blah, blah. I just uh, I just don't think that's uh, famous last words. If it's going to be famous last words, I'm sorry, I, I think it should be a City thing. I don't think it should be an opposing fan thing. Uh, they want to have an opposing fan thing, like a question and answer on, a, on an opposing fan, fair enough. But uh, I don't, you know, I think that famous last words should be, should be for City fans. But that's just me. I mean, obviously... 
as it, I do know now what the setup is. So as the season goes through, obviously we're going to get this, uh, you know, famous last words from uh, well-known, well, well-known, I don't even know this guy, but well-known well -known fans from other clubs as well. So that's going to be the layout. So as I said, I'm not overly impressed with that. So I don't, unless it's a city-orientated thing of interest, uh, I don't think I'll be looking too much into that in the future anyway. But there you go, great little programme, some great articles, obviously, with the... Uh, Canal Street Blues and of course uh, Gary James History and other bits and pieces and the statues of course so not a bad programme that I mean I'll say it, it usually takes me about 20-30 minutes to read through I don't, I'm a fast reader anyway I, I read most of it on the tram coming home from the game yesterday but uh, yeah it's okay uh, as I say I did rate the if you check my Norwich um, match day programme review I did rate it last week there's no difference no reason to change that particularly might get a little bit uh, might have got a little bit of a higher score with the Gary James bit and obviously other bits and pieces in this but uh, yeah please give give the city programme your support anyway which whichever way you know obviously they do they do sort of do lap we have sort of struggled a little bit with the magazines and stuff because um they do say they're not fantastic sellers so you know if you get out there get out and back i mean they're a mock they're, they're you know me and my moments in time and history they're a piece of history aren't they that you can keep i mean i've got thousands in the back there that are just collecting not collecting dust because i make use of them literally every day i'm always using them but uh yeah, they are a bit of city history, so get, get it. And you can pass it on to your kids and your grandkids and stuff like that. It'll be fantastic. Anyway, thanks for joining me today. I hope, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know any comments you want to make on that and uh, what you thought looking through the magazine if you bought it. Anyway, thanks for that. Whatever you want to do the rest of the day, have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. So we'll meet here again on the Citizen Channel. Or perhaps have a break, have a look at my film and TV channel as well. I'll try and inform and entertain on there as best I can. That would be fantastic. Anyway, I only ask one little thing off you, don't I? Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.